Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with myself, Jackie Jones, and Bob Cook. And because we're coming up to the festive season, we thought we'd do something a little bit relevant to that time of year and maybe how it impacts on us. Meeting up with family members that maybe we've not seen for a while and the pressure of it all the pressure of christmas yeah it's meant to be a jolly old time but it isn't for 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 lots of people because past experiences can impact on us and you know particularly i suppose what i was thinking with us being in the midst of the pandemic still um Mm -hmm. last christmas we weren't allowed to get together in groups so you know the there's going to be some feelings maybe well uh for those people watching podcasts who probably can't see me but i've got a very big beard yes and, a bit uh, santa-esque people that can see me uh will see that i've got a big big beard and uh yeah a bit like father christmas <clears throat> and often i think what happens to father christmas in the therapy room and also in the in society but let's talk about a therapy room at the moment which is what I would call the Father's, Father Christmas myth. And the Father Christmas myth really fosters disappointment. Uh, a disappointment script in transactionalist terms that through, uh, through the sort of idealization that uh, the Christmas or festive time will sort of um, take away all our uh, issues or resolve all our problems and then people of course get disappointed because they find out that the problems or issues are far more deep ridden yeah and it's the same it's the same actually culturally uh, people you know uh, idolize christmas and often find out that um that, well most times find out that the, the idealization doesn't match up to reality yeah Often, I think that's the case. It's the, it's the build up to it and then the letdown. I sometimes <laughs> associate it to, which is a bit random, um, kind of being pregnant and the build up to the birth of a baby and then the come down after it. A lot of people, that's how it feels sometimes. It's, you know, a month of preparation for for one day and it doesn't always live up to expectations. No, that's what I'm talking therapeutic yeah. of course, with clients. The um, these important occasions, uh, which all hopes and expectations are foisted on, often because um, they're built up psychologically, don't um, happen. So the the person gets disappointed. So that script continues. Yeah. So what can we do? What what? what can we do about that in the therapy room yeah let's stick with the therapy room i mean culturally i I think you know many of the things we're going to talk about here um they they match each other what's happened in the therapy rooms matches what happens uh culturally but in the therapy room at christmas of course um lots of things happen number one the therapist usually takes a time off uh to have christmas yeah so there's a there's a gap from therapy and we all know that when there's a gap from therapy clients usually may well act out because they uh, have lost their secure object or feel abandoned yeah and also remember most therapists go into th- most clients go into therapy with a the father christmas myth already and that's the th- that the therapist will solve everything and that is, of course, not what it's about. therapy is about. Therapy is about helping the person take ownership of their own issues and helping them um, and supporting them making change themselves. Not that some sort of Father Christmas is going to come around and wave a magic wand and everything will be okay. 
So would you say that these sort of issues need addressing whatever time of year that we're at? You know, yeah. I suppose, yeah. again, it touches on contracts <clears throat> and, you know, planning for a holiday period with the client and letting them know that, you know, if you're going to take time off, how long and how that's going to be and... Absolutely. I mean, that's taken as word, I think, for the therapist. Uh, and the therapist that sort of ignores that, um, they do so their own folly. Yeah. And then the more disturbed clients will act out. Yeah. So would you say December as a whole, you know, is is different to any other month because <clears throat> of all these things? Because it does kind of link in and maybe shine a light on that Father Christmas, you know, the therapist is going to fix me type thing. Yeah, you see, I think, I don't want to be a sort of uh, bearer of bad tides when we talk about Christmas. But the truth is, the real truth is, that the majority of the clients in my clinical load, um, I don't see many people now, um, I don't work clinically, but when I did for all these years, um, they have lots of different issues from self-esteem issues right up to personality disorders and a lot of them of course dealing with trauma and for a majority of clients Christmas has not been a very pleasant event for lots and lots of reasons. Yeah. They either um, come from reconstructed families or the, the um, build-up of Christmas triggers off many of the um, bad times they've had or the traumas they've had, parents or significant others not being there, homelessness, neglect, we could go on and on. And so Christmas stimulates, triggers yeah. traumatic events in a person's past. And usually for the majority of clients that I've worked with, Christmas has not reminded them of a happy, a happy time. Yeah. Is it, you know, touching on the cultural thing, is, is that oh. sort of around Christmas or, or would you say it's around any significant event in the calendar? I think Christmas is more built up. Yeah. You know, we're talking pandemic eras. Now, it was uh, 2020, Christmas of uh, 2020, where... We came to November and it was clear, very clear, that the escalation of deaths and the escalation of infections were getting so high that we needed a lockdown. But of course, what actually happened was that uh, the lockdown didn't happen over Christmas because it was such a special event. Those restrictions, which should have actually been completely, in my opinion, uh, uh, had a complete lockdown, and uh, would have resolved many, many issues. But because Christmas was built up to be such a significant time for many people, um, uh, that didn't happen. Yeah. And I think Christmas is built up culturally to be very, very significant. Now, religiously, of course it is, but if we're talking about this as a sort of festive event, this one day is very, very important culturally and significantly and psychologically in a person's memory banks yeah more than any other day yeah so would you bring that into the therapy room if the client doesn't w would you talk about plans for christmas and expectations and anything like that well it's not would i or i always did okay so 100 percent. in fact it's impossible to ignore isn't it well i mean it, it, you could completely ignore christmas but that would be denying well be denying a, a reality and also we deny the therapist the chance to look at the trauma and the difficulties and the actual experiences which usually weren't so good uh, yeah. for the clients in front of me yeah because i i know i'm i'm quite mindful of things like putting up decorations in the therapy room and you know I, I don't want to say keeping it a sterile environment but not assuming that everybody celebrates Christmas or that everybody's memories and expectations are going to be the same 
So I tend to not put things up in the therapy room, but I know some therapists do. They put a Christmas tree up and... Well, well, I, <laughs> I suppose I'm smiling because really I, I, I take your viewpoint and I think, um, I think uh, therapy rooms should be pretty um, barren, if you like. Yeah. Yeah that way and I think the therapist that starts to put Christmas trees up or puts up Christmas decorations can it be the very least well I, I think could be guilty of insensitivity unless they do it clinically um, in a way of thinking about triggers to uh, to enable a person to uh, have that stimulation but I think that's a pretty um over the top process to do, yeah. the, to do it that way around see you mentioned triggers there and and i think that's that's a really interesting topic that maybe we can look at more in depth on a, a, another episode but a trigger can be anything for an individual well triggers you know if you think of post-traumatic stress ptsd and and look at the research around what, what we're talking about here. Yes, you're right, of course, at one level. The research shows, actually, interestingly enough, that loud noises, um, uh, the uh, smells um, are, are usually the most evocative triggers. Um, you are right, uh, almost anything. But I think Christmas particularly um, is a very massive trigger because people are almost conditioned uh, and have an idolised fantasy around Christmas where suddenly in those 10 hours, everything will happen to resolve their misery. And it's very untrue for most people. Yeah. So what can we do in the therapy room? How can we, we help prepare clients? Well, it's about preparing. So what I do when I was really at Christmas, I used to talk a lot about what did Christmas mean for people? And for a lot of people, it meant neglect, homelessness, trauma, um, disappointments. Um, and we used to talk about, you know, the healing pro processes that we could actually have now in the therapy room. So, for example, for people who come into therapy, maybe being neglected or people in therapy who didn't have a good experience of Christmas, or people to come to therapy who had significant other people who actually treated them very badly in these events, or people who had mentally ill uh, parents, for example, or people who had traumas at Christmas time. Uh, the list is endless. Yeah. So uh, it gives the person the opportunity to talk about the reality of their own difficulties and traumas. Because you see, if, if when they leave the therapy room and they go outside into the, let's put say, real world, that real world doesn't give the individual the, the chance or time or the opportunity to talk about uh, their traumas, difficulties, neglect around Christmas because everything is supposed to be a jolly time. Yeah, yeah. So you see on the television, and you see many, many 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 programs about jolliness how wonderful things are idolization we could go on and on and people aren't supposed to talk about how difficult or dark or um, neglectful christmas might have been if they do talk about that they're often classed as humbugs yes yeah and you know again there's all the you know the office parties and all those sort of things where we are kind of actively encouraged to be festive and to to socialize and to do all those things and I suppose for you know I'm thinking about the clients that I've got at the moment you know the ones that suffer from social anxiety that that you know and then if they don't go there's that sense of loss or you know that fear of missing out and those sort of things that goes along with it. it it's probably one of the only times of the year where we we do feel i don't want to say forced into situations but we've we, there's a lot of things that we feel like we should be doing around christmas time i think we are i i don't mind the word forced i think the that's a very good word because we have 
um, back to back communication, television, newspapers, radios, which are telling us we should be happy. Yeah. So from that angle, forced is a pretty good word. Yeah. And it, it, you know, you were saying earlier on about, you know, the 10 hours of it. That's the thing is, you know, Christmas starts a lot earlier and ends a lot later now. You know, I know people that wait for the 1st of November and put their Christmas decorations up and it's like, whoa, it, it's going to nearly two months of festivities now as opposed to a week when I was young or even a couple of days maybe. Well, let's put it that way. If you go to the A&E department on Christmas Eve or the A&E department of New Year's Eve, you'll find more uh, suicide attempts, more overdoses, more, more traumas than any time of the year. Which says a lot about, yeah. Says a lot about Christmas. And yeah. New yeah. So it's the best thing that we can do to, to kind of support our clients is to talk about their past experiences and how that can impact on them today or give them permission to, you know, celebrate Christmas, however it feels right for them. What sort of things would you be doing in the therapy room? Well, first of all, I'd, I'd want therapy to be very real and give them the opportunity to talk about times which might have been particularly hard for them around the month of December and how Christmas might make them feel. Because often what Christmas makes them feel is that they haven't disaccounted for. In other words, they have to be happy, but nobody accounts for perhaps their unhappiness. Yeah. Is, is it a cultural thing? Is it a media thing? What What is it? Because I, I totally agree with what you're saying, that, you know, everybody is under pressure to be happy and enjoy it. And I would hazard a guess that, you know, 75% and upwards of people, I haven't got any statistics, don't feel, you know, very festive around the festive season. Is it cultural, do you think, or, or is it increased media uh, pressure? No, it, it's both those things. But it, I think, of course, there's more and more pressure put on us by media and uh, the, 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 the papers and all the communication to be happy. Now, we all know that loneliness, homelessness, neglect, the elderly, or have a particularly difficult time of Christmas. Yeah. Is it talked about? Not much. But, uh, you know, I often think many Christmases that I quite like to, and I, I, I should do it really. I, I haven't done it. When did I do it? Perhaps I did about 10 years ago. But actually, go down and help the homelessness in Manchester. Now, yeah. that's a good Christmas uh, act, wouldn't it? Kindness. Yes. Yeah. But the views are very, 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 very long and get bigger by the day. And Christmas, New Year, when we should be happy and everything else that goes with it, people often feel uh, lonely, unhappy and neglected. And often their past histories have been representative of what we're talking about here. Yeah. How do you feel about Christmas? How do I feel about Christmas? Yeah. Well, uh, is, is the, should we focus some of the time outside of the therapy room on ourselves and the impact it has on us as therapists? What do you mean about Say a bit more about Jackie. I'm not sure what you mean. Well, you, you, literally what you were saying about the lists at A&E being longer, you, you know, that, that we are likely to be seeing clients that are feeling an increased pressure whether that's PTSD or anxiety or past trauma or things like that that may be our workload it it seems to be less of a workload in the summer and more of a workload in the winter whether that's connected with Christmas and dark nights and those sort of things 
So should we as therapists be focusing on our own mental health and self-care? I know it's important at any time of year, but particularly around this time as well. And our thoughts and feelings around Christmas. Well, that's a good question. That's a good sort of conversation. I, I would like to think, and maybe I'm wrong here, that, uh, that and perhaps I'm very wrong, but, but, but a lot of therapists put, put a lot of their money and time into their own self-care, I hope. Therapists are often middle class. They've, probably, they've usually got um, some access to money, so they might go to therapists twice a week, or they might um, spend more time uh, on their self-care, maybe going on holiday or whatever it is, or even times to actually just meditate or have some sense of uh, mindfulness about what this day is all about. Um, I don't know any research into it, but I think it's a very good point. I think that therapists need to, you know, have support if need be and go to therapy, particularly at these times when actually um, there's more pressure on being in inverted commons happy and there's a denial of what I think is reality. Yeah. Yeah, because I suppose, you know, th there is pressure on us as therapists to be authentic. And what does that look like in the therapy room? If, if we don't enjoy Christmas, is that authentic in the therapy room? And do we let people know that? No, I didn't say you're making an assumption. I didn't say I didn't. A therapist don't enjoy Christmas. I didn't even say I didn't enjoy Christmas. Um, it, I think there's a difference between enjoyment uh, and, and, and enjoying the day if in an authentic way, if that, if, you know, for example, with my family and uh, Stephanie, I can have some of my favourite uh, things on television, sports and different things. I can allow myself to enjoy Christmas. But, the, but what I was really talking is the reality of the many, 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 and especially my clients, who are stimulated and triggered by Christmas and actually uh, feel more hurt, not recognised and not accounted by society. And they haven't got a family to go home to, or they may just go to a bed sit to go home to, or they may have to be part of a reconstructed family. It reminds them of the family they never had in their own history. So I can enjoy Christmas and that's the same time. Well, actually, when I'd say enjoy Christmas, I do to certain times, but I do go to therapy, as you said, brings up things from the past. But what I'm talking about is my professional duty, which is to help people talk about things which have been stimulated by often Christmas or New Year in a way that they've not had the chances to before. And hopefully that will mean they don't then go and hurt themselves uh, in that, enact out their own traumas because nobody's but nobody's accounted for their own trauma. That doesn't mean I don't necessarily have the time to enjoy Christmas. Yeah, I'm not sure whether you misunderstood what what I was meaning originally, but that's I did. But um, I, I I wanted to just make the difference between. Therapists can allow themselves to have enjoyment as well as dealing with very difficult processes. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not sure that was the query, question or conversation, but yeah. that's where I've ended up. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's absolutely fine. That, I think that's something that I say to clients a lot of the time that, you know, we can be anxious and OK at the same time. We, we can have a feeling and be okay at the same time. It's not an either or situation. So yeah, we can enjoy Christmas and, you know, be triggered or things. It's it's not an either or situation. Mm. Yeah. Yes, but you see, I, you said something not long ago and it's very true. The therapists work harder at Christmas. Mm. Their workload is more difficult at Christmas and you know, New Year and the dark nights and everything that goes on with that. Now, then the question is, how come um, that's not the case so much in the summer, for example? Because I think Christmas, New Year stimulates a lot of difficult times for people. 
and they haven't got the space to talk about it because they're supposed to be in inverted commas happy. Yeah. We've we haven't we see we haven't even talked about the economic pressure of Christmas. That's another big thing for an awful lot of people. Yeah. And again, you know, is it linked into the adverts on the television and the media and how it's all supposed to look? And yeah. Do you know the average Christmas rate uh, or present of presents for an average family of four people? I don't think I want to. Go on, surprise me. No, I'm not going to surprise you, but it's a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can believe how it. Many, you know, uh, how many Christmas presents does my, if I think about it, did my daughter get uh, uh, when she was four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Far too many. Mm. It's a huge economic pressure for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, being able to make the family happy and buy the presents and we could go on and on and on. And I think a lot of people feel extremely guilty if they don't do that. Yeah. But a lot of that, I believe, comes from the pressure of, uh, of expectations and media put on all of us. And our clients feel it just the same. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I suppose that, you know, for, for some people, it does encourage a, a connection between the amount of gifts and our self-worth or you know those sort of things that, that we need to prove love to somebody by buying the most expensive thing in the shop and those sort of things around you know again it's our thoughts and <coughs> it's but yeah we do tend to think strange things around christmas time and that's because strange things happen at christmas time yeah often and not necessarily happy things and that's what I, I'm tending to deal with in the therapy room. The past, which is brought into the present, or the present, which is actually so much uh, of a hardship or difficulty, and there's so much going on, the people are, then get the opportunity to talk about their own hurts and tribulations. Yeah. So Christmas isn't a particularly particularly a time where, um, put another way, there's a lot going on in the therapy room at Christmas time. Yeah. But we we do cope with it every year. How many Christmases have you had in the therapy room, Bob? 30? Well, I've stopped now, but I have 34, 35, yeah. 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 Yeah, I always like to put a positive slant on things. And, you know, ultimately, I suppose one of the things that I do believe is that it's OK for us to celebrate Christmas however we want to as an individual. Yeah, and of course, I'm the same. And I'm sure maybe people listening to podcasts are thinking, gosh, Christmas very dark and dreary time for Bob Cook. <laughs> I'm talking more about what, Christmases trigger off for clients, uh, you know, in terms of their past histories and yeah. the opportunity for them to have some healing and new experiences um, in a different way. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean, going back to what you said 20 minutes ago, that doesn't mean putting a Christmas tree in the middle of the therapy room and having baubles and fairies dancing around and you know, balloons and goodness knows what. In fact, for some people, that would be, could be so traumatic, it would be so overwhelming. Yeah. You can't force people to uh, enjoy Christmas because you just think people should enjoy Christmas by yeah. putting Christmas trees on. So I, I was sort of surprised when you said that, but, you know, I'm often surprised what I hear therapists do. Yeah. It, it, it again it's you know I, su I suppose we've spoke at, at length and it, you know on each one of the sessions it's about being mindful of people's triggers it's about being mindful of people's past experience and trauma and how you know the, the most insignificant of things can can trigger that absolutely and by definition the people that come in my consulting room I've had troubled histories mm. and often Christmas has not been good 
time for them. Yeah. Now, I don't deal with people who uh, really are quite healthy functioning. You know, I, I, I deal with people who want have issues to resolve and perhaps have a fragile sense of self. So, you know, I have a different clientele. I don't have, um, you know, a whole group of people who are pretty healthy functioning or who, who have the capacity perhaps to even be happy. So I deal, with, uh, uh, I deal often, I deal often with the troubled world, where Christmas is very stimulating, or can be. Yeah. And I suppose that you know, it, it, just touching on it before we finish as well, it, it, if people, you know, it, with substance misuse, it, for some reason, you know, oh. alcohol and things like that, it's it's very difficult to you know, be around that if you are, you know, an ex-addict of alcohol or drugs or those sort of things as well, because it's seen as part of the festive season. You're totally true. I mean, I think you hit on a really good point, which we didn't perhaps talk enough about, but I, the more I talk on this podcast, the more I'm thinking about it, is how, is how, how therapists take care of themselves at a time which often... Um, is the most troubling time for clients and therefore there's so much difficult stuff projected onto the therapist and um, I think they, the therapists need to go to therapy if they need to have supervision if they need to uh, and um, allow themselves to enjoy Christmas or festive period if they want to and not get bogged down by the troubles of their clients. Mm. In other words, separate out professional and personal. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And sometimes that's easier to do than others. Oh, absolutely. And I just said, if you go into the AE on New Year's Day, where there's more suicides, more drug overdoses any time in the year, and Christmas follows it, by the way. Um, it, it, you're perfectly correct. Yeah. Some some trauma, some stories are quite hard to leave in the therapy room. Yeah, yeah. It is. And, and I suppose it all depends, you know, because we are only human, and I think it's something that's overlooked a lot of the time, that as therapists we go through life events just like everybody else. And it's really important that, you know, we notice our own state of mind and where, where we are in the therapy room. And that, as always, there's a very fine line in feeling maybe or letting clients down in order to prioritise our own mental health and the feelings that can come around that. You're absolutely right. And I, I, if I, I know we're ending this podcast, but if I had to give a piece of wisdom... Uh, or tips if, to people listen to this and therapists listen to this counsellors listen to this I think the biggest thing to say to them is to be real at Christmas whatever that is mm. be authentic in the moment yeah because there's too much pretense out there at Christmas and New Year's time yeah what a lovely note to finish for Let's all have a real Christmas, as in <laughs> we can be real <laughs> and we can be authentic. So we have a unique Christmas. That's the other thing. It's like it's so stereotypical now. Literally everything, you, you know, it's it's kind of like the, the picture, put picture postcard on a Christmas is what we try to recreate. Let's let's be unique and individual and do it our own way. Yeah, no, I think it's really important to be real. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Bob. So, what we're we doing on the next one? Are we kind of following on a little bit from uh, this? You wanted one, I think, about it's about couples, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the title you put down? I think I read it as couples. Yes, yeah. Um, basically, it was how can therapy help with relationships? So, I presume couples is one relationship. Oh, but... okay. So, it's a wider. A wider conversation okay yeah. i look forward to talking about that yeah okie doke see you on the next one bob yeah bye bye
You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.